How many people in this room have to deal with human beings as part of what you do every day? Does anyone have to deal with those people? All right, so that being the case, we're going to be in the right spot because I'm going to fly in the face right now of what you've heard your entire life. Are you ready? Positive thinking doesn't really work. If you had the worst year of your life, or for whatever reason, personally, professionally, you didn't have the sort of year you wanted. In fact, maybe you were even at ground zero. If I walked up to you right now and said, come on, man, just be positive. What would you want to do to me right now? <laughs> I don't teach be positive. I teach something else. I teach useful. That word, bang. Because useful is not about a feeling or an emotion. Useful is about an action. What are the most useful actions you can take to get from two to five? What are the most useful actions to get from five to eight, right? In fact, I say useful belief. Useful belief is the idea I want you to take away because actually it's amazing, right, how many people do not have a useful belief. And the difference between having a useful belief about your life is, well, a game changer. Well, let, let's talk through a little bit about this. And who has children? Who has children? Let me ask this question. Wow, look at that. All right, now, of all those people, who have ever been a part of a conversation like this, right? Are you ready? I can't believe kids today. Have you ever had this conversation, right? I can't believe when I was a kid, who's ever said that? Now, people ask me the question. I got three boys, 15, 12, 10. People say to me, Chris, what do you think about kids today? And I say this. Well, I think it's the greatest time in the history of the world to be a kid. I think it's the greatest time in the history of the world to be a dad. Now, I don't know if either one of those things are true. But let me say this, I don't think truth matters as much as we actually think it really does, right? In fact, you'll find truth is very much a perception anyway. We sort of often have let other people create our truths anyway. Because I know this, when I believe it's the best time ever to be a kid, when I believe it's the best time ever to be a parent, when I believe those things, I'm a better dad. I'm a better dad because I'm present and I'm locked in. I have a reality in my life, uh, and that reality is I travel a lot. Right? In fact, last year, well, I did 177 presentations last year, and I did 117 airplane flights. That's a lot of airplane flights, uh, and I, I, you know, there it is. I'm Platinum Qantas and Platinum Virgin, and uh, I fly around. That's like roughly three times a week that I'm on an airplane, three days a week. And people say to me all the time, Chris, don't you hate travel? You must hate travel. If I was you, I would hate travel, they say to me. Well, hang on a second. If I'm going to fly three days a week, that's my reality. Now, by the way, I could stop traveling, couldn't I? I could stop traveling, right? But guess what? That would affect my lifestyle. That would affect, right, the ability for me to go out and influence people. So let's call it my reality. I can't not travel, right? I'm a traveling. So guess what? What is my useful belief? I'm not going to I'm not going to hate travel or I'd hate a third of my life, right? So guess what? I what's my useful belief? I love airplanes. I <laughs> I love them. I love airports. I love airport lounges. I love airplane food. I love air Actually, the Virgin Lounge and the Qantas Lounge both have ham. I think they share the same ham. When you say this is the best time in the history of the world to be in your job, to be in your industry, an amazing thing happens. Well, there's an interesting part of your brain, the most important part of your brain for success, and it is a little thing called the reticular activating system. And what the reticular activating system does for you is that it filters the billions of pieces of information that you get on a daily basis. And with these bits of information, your brain is going to go find exactly what it is that you are out there putting forward as a useful belief. Well, let, let's talk through a little bit about this, and let's give you a first idea. Who drove in this morning? Who drove here this morning? How many times did you say to yourself, driving in this morning, did you say, oh my God, another red Toyota, right? <laughs> I'm imagining zero is the number on that. You want to know why? You weren't looking for red Toyotas. The second you decide to buy a red Toyota, your reticular activating system will find them. And where are they going to be? everywhere. You can see them everywhere. Why? Because your reticular activating system is looking for and filtering through what it is that you put forward. When I say it's the best time in the history of the world to be alive, if I believe that, that's my useful belief, then guess what? I walk outside and I'm going to see amazing things. I'm going to see a flower and a tree and a puppy and a baby. I'm going to find beautiful things in the world because my brain will be searching for those things. By the way, um, your reticular activating system tortures you, 
all right? If you've ever had your heart broken here in this room, and I imagine we've all, we, all of us at one time or another have had our heart broken. There's always like one guy in the back of the room is going, not me, not ever. No one's ever broken my heart. But for the rest of us who've had our heart broken, your reticular activating system's gonna torture you. Because if you, well, if we've had our heart broken, we walk outside, what do we see everywhere? Stupid, happy people everywhere holding hands in their perfect families and their perfect lives while we're heartbroken. By the way, if you are currently unhappy in your current relationship, then what do you see everywhere? Hot single people everywhere that you can't have, right? Because your reticular activating system is filtering what it is that we're looking for. Now, Let's make this come alive and bring this right back to sales. Let's go all the way back to the most relevant point that we talk about in this industry, in this business right now. As soon as you say to yourself, I'm going into this meeting, it's going to be a waste of time. <laughs> what do you do? You get your reticular activating system, your red Toyota's looking for it, you sit down, get in the body language, and there you are, searching, searching, looking for it, looking for, oh, there it is, waste of time, told you, huh? <laughs> Very different to have a useful belief where you go in and say, you know what, I don't know if they're gonna get anything out of this meeting or not, but I'm gonna be open. And when you're open with a useful belief about the meeting, it may not come, but if it does, you won't miss it, right? We start thinking about having a useful belief about how we go at things. It's a useful belief about your reality. Every single person in this room has a reality, your reality. And with the things you can change, right? Well, you can make that change, but with those things that can't change, have a useful belief about them. This is our reality. So decide to enjoy, embrace the things about your life that are real. Do you know what's amazing? And we got people on the phone face to face every day. Only 7% of your communication is words. That's crazy. Albert Morabian did a study. Only 7% of your communication is words. That is a very small percentage. Instead, 38%, five times more powerful is the tone with which you speak. Now you know this is true, by the way, if you've ever been in a relationship before in your life, right? <laughs> And all of a sudden you look at your partner, you're like, what, 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 what did I, what I say, what I do? Nothing, you did nothing, right? You know right now <laughs> that nothing meant what? Something, everything, absolutely. You know this. In fact, 55% of our communication is our body language. So we start thinking about the power of tone in creating great customer experiences, the power of our body language in creating great customer experiences, and in fact, well, how many people have ever heard about mirroring body language? Who've ever heard about mirroring tone and body, right? You know, mirroring, actually mirroring didn't really work for me. You're like, what is with this guy, man? Positive thinking doesn't work, mirroring. You know, I just, I, I became too obsessed with it, right? There I'd be, right? And uh, uh, if I'm gonna mirror this gentleman right here, right, I just got obsessed. I would sort of get my, my foot at the same spot as him and my other foot there, and then I'd sort of cross over and they'd do this sort of groin protection thing <laughs> that he's sort of doing right now. And, um, you know, I don't know, I just, I, I missed the moment. Instead, you know what it is? I like matching. The final one, of all the successful people I've met, I truly, I've done over 2,000 presentations. I've had the privilege, privilege of working with hundreds of thousands of people. And driving from a place of gratitude, I have to say, you guys have given me the greatest gift you could have given me today. You gave me your time. And when people give you their time, right, that's the greatest gift they could give you. And we have, well, it's my mission statement that when you give me your time, I promise you I'll give you everything I got. And that's it. And the rewards are there.